Church today. I'm James and this is Meg and it is awesome to be here with you guys. Now uh, Meg we're going to be talking today about how uh, living the truth is loving God's people. So mm. can you think of a time when you've been particularly loved by God's people? Yeah definitely. I think for me one time that particularly stands out amongst the rest is when I was going through my HSC in year 12. Mm. Definitely found that experience really stressful and hard at times but definitely felt the love and support of my church and from my family as well as we went through that. And really just loved being accepted and cared for them as I kind of trekked that hard path. Um, yeah, so that was awesome and really encouraging as well. And yeah, how yeah. about yourself, James? Well, I can just think over the years, the amount of times that we've been invited in people's homes and they've shown us hospitality of one kind mm -hmm. or another, it, it's honestly, it's dozens and dozens of people over the years that have just kindly welcomed us and made us feel at home and blessed us with food and all sorts of different ways like that. So I think yeah. uh, just experiencing that sort of Christian hospitality uh, has been fantastic and just a real blessing to us. So we're going to be thinking about that a little bit more today. Matt's going to be taking us through uh, that whole idea of what it means to walk in the truth by loving God's people. But first, we are going to sing together, and this is 10,000 Reasons. So we'll hand over to Fee and Dave. Church, 
let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much for the love that you have poured out upon us from the deep riches of your grace. We pray, Father, that today our hearts will be humble as we come before you. We pray, Father, make us honest about our sin and the things in our hearts that do not please you, the things that we have done that dishonour you. Lord, may we be honest enough to admit that we need a saviour, that we need Jesus. We need all that he has done for us through his death and resurrection on the cross. We come before you broken, sinful and weary of the cost of our sins upon us and the ones we love. But Father, we know that as we come to you contrite and poor in spirit, that Lord, you give us the gift of life. All those who believe in you have your assurance that our sins are forgiven and that we are given new lives and new hearts in accordance with your word and the power of your spirit. We pray, Father, that today your word and spirit would be active in us to change us and make us more like Jesus. Lord, that we would indeed walk the truth by loving one another. We pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would empower us to live to love you and to love others, that we would give generously and sacrificially the same way that you have given to us. We pray, Lord, as we gather around your word and as we sing, as we pray, and as we hear from Matt, that, Lord, you might change and transform us so that we would be a people who live for you and your glory and not our own. We pray, Father, as you do this, that we would become a people more and more who are a witness to the world of the glory of your goodness and the wonders and riches of your grace and mercy and what is possible by the power of your spirit when we enable our hearts to be humble before you. We pray, Father, that you would use us in this world in order to tell others about you and all that you have done. And we pray, Father, for any today joining us online or in person who do not yet know you. And we pray, Father, you would give them the gift of faith, that they would believe and confess their sin and turn from it and put their trust and hope in you. And that you would give them the gift of life, the same as you have given us. We ask for this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, church, a couple of announcements for us this morning. Uh, the first one is just to let you know that in term four, we're going to be studying and working our way through the book of John. Uh, John is a fantastic book. Uh, it really focuses on the signs and miracles that Jesus performs in order that we might know him truly. We see lots of conversations and discussion happening between him and the religious leaders of his day, again, to help us understand more deeply who he is. And it really focuses on on making it crystal clear to us that Jesus is the Son of God and the Saviour of the world. So that's going to be a great uh, book to work through in Term 4, and we'll be back uh, looking at Genesis in the new year. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of a picture as well about what Term 4 is going to be looking like. Uh, we're keeping a close eye on COVID restrictions, but for the most part, it seems that the things are going to be progressing in the direction that they've already been traveling, which means we'll have an ability to meet together with uh, certain restrictions still here in place. And we expect that to continue through term four at the moment. Uh, so if you're able to be here with us in person, that is fantastic. Uh, if there's still some good reason for you to be staying at home, we understand and we'll continue to do what we do online. Uh, but in this season, growth groups in particular are really important because that's the chance that we get to go a little bit deeper together to find out what's happening in each other's lives, to pray for one another. So if you're in growth groups, we're going to be kicking back off again in the first week of term four. Uh, so that's the week after next. Uh, but if you're not in a growth group, the start of term is a fantastic time to join and you can contact us at the office and uh, we will get you plugged into a group uh, and help you get settled into that. And the other thing just to let you know about is that our communications coordinator, Alison McCann, is going to be on leave for the next two weeks. So if you have any questions or queries, you can send them to me or Matt in the office and we'll help you out as best we can. Okay, what we're going to do now is we are going to sing again, and this time it is Great Is Thy Faithfulness. Shadow of turning with thee. 
Lachlan who's going to pray for us and the needs of our church and then Sam is going to come and read the Bible for us and then after that Matt's going to come and take us through what the Bible has to say. Let us pray. Heavenly Father you are worthy of praise. You're great, you made everything and it is incredible. You're such a caring God who looks after all the creatures on this amazing planet, possibly other planets too. You look after us and give us great stuff to enjoy and we thank you so much. We thank you particularly for the people and the great variety of them that we get to share this planet that you've given us. But we are aware that the relationships between people and cultures and nations can be and are strained across the globe. We think particularly of the political unrest between us and China. We pray that it doesn't amount to anything with too dire consequences. May cool heads prevail and the freedoms we enjoy in this country be preserved, and the differences across cultures be celebrated. We're troubled by the ongoing racism in this country, and it getting worse in the future due to the international unrest. May people across this nation acknowledge more their sinfulness and need for forgiveness and find it in Jesus. May the church be full of people from different cultures, unified by being forgiven in Jesus. We bring to you our Victorian neighbours as the COVID restrictions ease there. Thank you that this is happening. Thanks that the people can start thinking about going back to school and church. We pray that as these things happen in Victoria, that we in New South Wales might continue to enjoy the relative stability we have here. May churches take advantage of the freedoms that we have and encourage meeting together in person again more regularly. As we think about our local area, we pray particularly for those amongst us who are doing the HSE currently. We pray for those in our church who are sitting these exams and their parents. 
and we ask that the HSC be kept in perspective. May you remain more important to these students than the exams during this time and what they promise in the future. We pray for those students as they leave school and go into university that they maintain their faith in you and grow to have a faith, or grow to have faith in you. We think of others, particularly in our church family, who are struggling in one way or another. God, we pray for the friends and family of Lorraine Thompson, who passed away recently. Please comfort them and Lorraine's daughters and her husband as they grieve. Thank you for the life you gave Lorraine and for the life we all enjoy. We pray for new life experiences and the upcoming wedding of Ash and Zach. May their marriage be full of love and faithfulness, and may their marriage be a blessing to many others. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's Bible reading is from 3 John, the Elder. To my dear friend Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Dear friend, I pray that you enjoy good health, and that you may go well with you. It... Bad. Restart. Today's Bible reading is from 3 John. The Elder, to my dear friend Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health, and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along. It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth, telling in how you continue to walk in it. I have no greater joy than when you hear when I hear that my children are walking in the truth. Dear friends, you're, you are faithful in what you are doing to, for your brothers and sisters, even though they are strangers to you. They have told me and the church about your love. Please send them on their way in a manner that honours God. It was for their sake of the name that they went out, reconceiving no help from the pagans. We ought, therefore, to show hospitality to such people so that they may work together for the truth. I wrote to the church, but Diotrephus, who loves to be first, will not welcome us. So when I come, I will call attention to what he is doing, spreading malicious nonsense about us. Not satisfied with that, he even refuses to welcome other believers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. Dear friend, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is for God but anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. Demetrius is well spoken of by everyone, and even by the truth itself. We also speak well of him, and you know that, uh, and we know that because his testimony is true. I have much to write, but I do not want to do it with pen and ink. I hope we see each other soon, and then we can talk face to face. Peace to you. The friends here send their greetings. Greet the friends by their names. Good day, everyone. In the 1998 film The Wedding Singer, Adam Sandler plays a professional wedding singer who, after having his long-term girlfriend stand him up at the altar, has to go and sing at another wedding. But as you can imagine, he's not in a good mood for singing about love, uh, and he ends up singing a song at this wedding reception with the following words. He sings, You love her, but she loves him, and he loves somebody else. You just can't win. And so it goes until the day you die, this thing you call, they call love, it's going to make you cry. I've had the blues, the reds and the pinks. One thing's for sure, love stinks. Love stinks. Yeah, yeah, love stinks. Now, let's face it, he's right. When love doesn't match up with what you expect, love stinks. When you hope for love and it lets you down, love stinks. When you're looking for love and you just can't seem to find it, love stinks. When people don't love the way that they're meant to, love stinks. Maybe you've hoped for a bit of love at church, but you've been let down. Uh, you've looked for it, but can't find it. You mightn't say out loud, love stinks, but maybe you wish love was a little bit more fresh. So how do we freshen up the love at church? Well. The Bible's got quite a bit to say on loving each other as God's people, as I'm sure many of us know. The letter of 3 John might not have been your first uh, place to go to on that topic, but I pray as we look at it together and other parts of the Bible, 
that we might get a little bit of Glen 20 on our loving. Because to love God's people is actually to walk in the truth, the truth of who God is as revealed in Jesus. That's what the Apostle John thinks as he writes to his friend and brother in Christ, Gaius, and gushes over the fact that Gaius' love for God's people shows he's walking in the truth. So verse 1, he writes, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth, telling how you continue to walk in it. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Dear friend, you are faithful in what you are doing for the brothers and sisters, even though they are strangers to you. They have told the church about your love. To walk in the truth of Jesus is to love God's people. As those committed to the truth about God in Jesus, then, will look to love God's people too. And so that's where we're going today, at what it looks like to love God's people. Uh, firstly, we'll see by being hospitable. Uh, secondly, by putting others first. And then thirdly, by regularly meeting together as God's people. So, first up, to love God's people is to be hospitable. Uh, that's what Gaius did. Uh, see that in verse 5? Dear friend, John writes, you are faithful in what you are doing for the brothers, even though they are strangers to you. They have told the church about your love. So some brothers in Christ, teachers of the gospel like John, they'd obviously rocked up at Gaius' church, and even though he didn't know them, uh, they were strangers, he loved them. How? Well, he was hospitable. He welcomed them into his life. He welcomed them into his home. He fed them, he housed them, he looked after them. And John reckons that that's what we should all do. He writes in verse 8, We ought therefore to show hospitality to such people so that we may work together for the truth. John's particularly keen here that God's people show hospitality, hospitality to those who preach and teach the gospel and that in doing so we actually join with them in that important work. But elsewhere it's clear we're to be hospitable to any of our brothers and sisters in Christ, to any Christian uh, that maybe we don't even really know that well. As 1 Peter says, Love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. The word hospitality is a cool word in the Greek. Uh, it's the word philozenos. It's made up of two words, philos, love, and xenos, stranger. So to love the stranger in Christ, then, someone who's not necessarily in your immediate family or circle of friends, uh, is to show hospitality. And to do this is to walk in the truth, because the truth is that God is hospitable. In his love, he gave his son as an atoning sacrifice for sins, and he's, he sacrificed what was most precious to him to ensure that he could have strangers with him where he lives, at his place, so to speak. You see, we're all strangers to God because of our sin, and we've all sinned, we've all wronged God and deserve to be chucked out of his place, but through Jesus' death for our sin, God's actually offering us forgiveness and inviting us into his place Forever, he's actually inviting strangers back home with him. Jesus, then, is the greatest welcome mat ever. That's what God's like. And walking in the truth of this will look like loving like this, being hospitable, which, no doubt, it'll be costly and inconvenient. Uh, not that long ago, a spokesperson from the US Association of Bridal Consultants was quoted as saying this, I can't recall the last time I heard a bride promise to love until death. People are more realistic now. Well, I'm glad Jesus didn't exercise this kind of realism when he loved us. He loved his people to death. And as his people, it shouldn't surprise us if we feel moved to do something similar for each other, that we give up our time, our space, our money, our energy, our life, to be hospitable. It shouldn't surprise us that, like Gaius, we love our brothers and sisters in Christ, even if, and especially if, we don't really know them that well. No matter who they are, old, young, from a, a different culture or uh, with different in interests, we'll count the cost to reach out and welcome them into our lives, welcome them into our space, into our home. 
and care for them and look out for them and talk with them and listen to them and help them as need arises. Because to walk in the truth is to love God's people, which looks like being hospitable. That's the first point. The second point is we love God's people by putting them first before ourselves. Unlike the guy Diotrephus that was in Gaius' church, that John says loves to be first. He writes in verse 9, I write to the church, but Diotrephus, who loves to be first, will have nothing to do with us. So if I come, I'll call attention to what he's doing, gossiping maliciously about us. Not satisfied with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. Diotrephus loves being first. It seems church for him is about him, not others. It's certainly not about strangers. And either by his example or his influence or both, he's stopping others in that church loving God's people too. And John's like, don't be like him, as he says to Gaius in verse 11. Uh, Dear friend, don't imitate what is evil like Diotrephus, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. Clearly, it's a real temptation to be like Diotrephus. Uh, No surprise, really, because... It's easier to love yourself over others. It's easier uh, to grumble and disagree and point the finger and gossip than to be gracious and patient and loving and hospitable. Evil is easy. Doing good, well, that's hard. Uh, It costs more, but it's worth it because it comes from seeing who God is, really knowing and appreciating the cost God paid to love his people in Jesus is to see God. In the truth about Jesus, we see what God's like and what he's on about. And it's this, the truth about God in Jesus, that'll move his people to love like him, to put others first and to avoid getting sucked into being like the world, like the Diotrephuses in this world, who are peddling something that's everywhere and acceptable. There's a popular self-help program called Living the Truth, Uh, It's got four basic principles for unlocking a truthful life. First, feel your true emotions. Second, find your true self. Third, forgive with a true heart. And finally, fourth, forge your true future. Now, at first glance, this doesn't seem half bad until you realise the truth to be found in this program is it's all relative to you, your emotions, yourself, your heart, your future. Uh, This program might be better called living your own truth, which is the gospel of the world, right? Which not only feels right a lot of the time, uh, it's a lot easier than living for others. But God knows that's not really living the truth. That's living a lie, dressed up as the truth. And like all lies, it's a parasite and a cheap charade. In the end, living for your own truth only sucks others dry and leaves you lonely and empty. And so John's saying... Don't get sucked into the hat, into the ways of this world, the way of me first, particularly in church, because church is not about me, uh, it's about us. I was struck particularly by this when we went through uh, Romans earlier in this year, as the Apostle Paul writes uh, from chapter 12, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Not living sacrifices, plural, but a living sacrifice, singular. As a whole, Paul says, God's people are to be a living sacrifice. As a whole, they're to worship God. Properly worshipping God and doing church, then, is less about what I do and more about what we do. God's way is different to the world's way, in that it's not I first, but we. And this takes a bit of a shift in our thinking which is only going to happen in view of the truth of God's mercy in Jesus, because it's in this mercy that God shows us something remarkable. That although he is the first and the greatest, the I am, the one, the only one who has every right to concern himself with what he wants and what he does first before anyone else, the only one who doesn't need anyone else to fulfill him or make him whole or satisfy him, that this great I am, mercifully chose us instead of just him. He chose to be with us forever. So to live God's way is to change our thinking, 
in view of God's mercy, the truth of God's mercy, and to walk in that truth is to think about us instead of me. Not like the world's thinking, not like dear Trefus, who brought the world's thinking into church and loved to be first, but to walk in the truth and love others before yourself, to put yourself in their shoes, to find out what's good for them over yourself, to forgive them when they don't deserve it, to not gossip about them or discourage others mixing with them, but to love them over yourself. So, that's the second point. We love God's people by putting them first. And the third point is, we love by regularly meeting together. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10 is a classic go-to text for this, uh, where we read from verse 24. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. There seems to be a link between spurring one another on toward love and good deeds and regularly meeting together. I guess that's because it's hard to spur each other on in Jesus if we're not intentionally meeting together to do so. A while ago, I wanted a six pack. Uh, that's not me. Uh, that's just an example of a six pack. I know it might come as a surprise to you that I don't already have uh, one. I'm sure I do in there somewhere uh, under that layer of fat. But to see it, I knew I'd have to commit to a serious diet and some serious exercise. I needed to be intentional about that. But I wasn't. Uh, and so the six pack isn't. It's the same with loving God's people. To do so, to be spurring each other on towards love and good deeds, means we need to be intentionally meeting together. To love God's people then is to be regularly meeting together. Growth groups are a great way to do this. And during this COVID season, there's no doubt that online conferencing tools like Zoom have been a, God, a godsend for many in meeting regularly together to spur each other on in love and good deeds. And many are still doing this uh, online and are likely to keep doing it, which is a, a good thing. If you're not in a growth group, or you are, and you're not getting along uh, regularly, see it for what it is. It's a, an opportunity to walk in the truth and love your brothers and sisters in Christ by meeting regularly with them and, and then get into it. Please let us know if you uh, want to join a growth group uh, and you're not in one. Uh, follow the links on our website, and drop me an email or give me a ring. Growth groups, they're a good way for meeting regularly together. And of course, so is Sunday Church. Uh, for good reasons, we've been pre-recording our services and showing them on the Sunday, as uh, you're watching now. And that's been great, really great. It's good to join in with God's people online, sitting around God's Word, praying together and uh, singing in the space. But I think we'd all agree meeting in person is better. And that seems pretty basic to the idea of doing church in the Bible. John yearns to be face-to-face -face with Gaius and with God's people, as do the other New Testament writers. And that makes sense. After all, God chose to reveal himself to be known to his people in the flesh when he sent Jesus. And he sends the Holy Spirit to dwell in the bodies of his people. Their bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit, we're told. God's keen on being with us in person. So it makes sense then that we would want to regularly be with God's people in person too. When the restrictions were first brought in and we stopped meeting together in person on a Sunday, I remember how much of a grief it was for, for many. Uh, and not just for people in our church, but for people in all churches. I know someone who stood outside their empty church building and wept. It was so painful for them. And so it's been really great then to be able to start meeting back in person for the past uh, couple of months. Now, it's true, when we first started meeting, uh, it was pretty weird and a bit stilted with the social distancing and not being able to sing and the, uh, the cleaning rigmarole. And those things, uh, they're still annoying, but as we've got into, used to things and got into the groove, it's feeling like 
church. It's really good. It's really worth it to be with each other in the flesh again. I've loved seeing people and being able to pray together and listen to God's word together and hear songs about him and to him together and chat afterwards for a little bit uh, together. Now, of course, we know some of you want to be there but just can't because of health reasons. And so the wisest, most loving thing uh, for you to do is to keep uh, regularly doing church online. We pray these online services continue to encourage you and spur you on. But we also know that there are others who want to come back but are worried about other things and maybe unsure whether you can, you can or you should. Uh, if that's you, please chat with us. It may be that we can figure something out within the restrictions that we've got to make it possible for you to come along to church in person. We'd love to talk through and help out as much as we can so that you might be able to enjoy church in person. Growth groups, uh, Sunday church, these are great ways to regularly meet together, to spur each other on in Jesus. Great ways to love God's people. So let's look to walk in the truth together and love each other in these ways. By being hospitable, by putting others first, and by regularly meeting together. You see, love does stink in church if it's only ever about me and mine, or if it's only about my convenience and comfort. But love in the truth, love that doesn't stink, it looks like being hospitable to your brothers and sisters in Christ. It looks like counting the cost and putting them first. And it looks like regularly meeting together as God's people. So let's keep walking in the truth together by loving God's people in these ways. Maybe after you switch off doing church online today, get in contact with someone from church. Maybe someone that you haven't talked to for a while or that you don't know that well and find out how you might love them. Let's be walking the truth by loving each other as God's people. And I'm going to pray to that end now. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your deep, uh, great and wonderful love for us in Jesus. Please help us to grasp afresh how good that love is so that we might Love our brothers and sisters in Christ as well. And so walk in the truth of who you are as revealed in Jesus. Help us to be hospitable, uh, to put others first and to do it in a way that promotes Jesus as we continue to regularly meet together. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
death could not contain him once the serpent of the world now in victory reigning lift your voices to the one who is seated music team that's definitely one of my favorite songs to risk and i love it so much yeah totally and it's a really appropriate one for us to finish on this week because jesus is the truth and we saw the way that he walked out his love for all of us uh, through his death on the cross and the journey that he undertook uh, to bring salvation to all so we pray that this week god's spirit would be with you as you seek to love god's people well and to honor god in all that we do uh, especially the way that we treat one another we'll see you soon <laughs>